All right, folks, uh, we're live. Great to have you with us on this Monday afternoon. Uh, we'll be here for a, a short while. Um, got to get ready, but I need to talk about Madeline Soto's mom and still tons of questions left and right every which way uh, going on right now. Thank you for joining us. All right. Um, got a lot of people checking in. A lot of people checking in. A lot of folks. All right. Alexandra talking about her getting lawyered up. I'll tell you what, on my show, we talked about it. And every guest, bar none, was saying that she should get a lawyer, that she needs a lawyer. Whatever the case is, whatever the, the truth of, of what she knew and when she knew it is, she needs a lawyer at this point. All right. Uh, let's see who we got. We got Michelle G is here. Of course, Viggy is here as well. Viggy is here. All right. Raggedy Hobo looking good today. South Carolina. Kess. Kess and SC. Fantastic. Our New York Patriot lady is here as well. Unap unapologetically authentic. Yes, indeed. Um, so Madeline Soto's mom. I mean, this is a real problem because you're looking at two aspects of this, right? There's the, um, the murder, right? On the one hand, on the other hand, you've got, um, the alleged sexual assaults that were taking place over the course of years. So uh, I think the investigation is, is, is twofold at this point, looking at both aspects of this in terms of what Madeline's mom knew or didn't know. Will she be the most important witness or will she be a co-defendant? And those are the only two possibilities for her right now. There's, there's two roads that she's on right now. One road is the key witness against Stefan Stearns or in the alternative, a potential co-defendant. And, and I think this is something that prosecutors will uh, be looking at um, in terms of how they want to handle it, right? Uh, do you need her? Do you need her as a witness? And is she a cleaner witness if she's not charged with anything, right? Once you charge her with something and then you give her a deal, then all of a sudden as a witness, she becomes a little more um, vulnerable at trial. So obviously it's about the facts, but by the same token, um, if you believe that, that Stephen Stearns is the 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 one here who was responsible for the murder of Madeline, then you may indeed, um, you need her. So when you're looking at, is there criminal liability or culpability for her, um, you want to make sure. You want to make sure. You don't want, because you I, if she's innocent, number one, I don't think you would need her. You would need to give her a deal for her to speak the truth about Stefan Stearns. Um, Devin is with us, but um, they may know better than we do. And, and my guess is at this point, she may not be talking with investigators, which always is strange, right? Like, you know, you can, in, in this country, you have the right to remain silent. You absolutely do. You don't have to say a word. But if you're not saying a word about, your missing murdered daughter who's been found. But if you're not, if you're not giving them every little piece of information that you can about what was happening in the house, what happened that day, what Stefan Stern said, all of that, if you're not being 100% transparent and ready, then that raises a red flag. But by the same token, you, you have a lawyer, right? If she hires a lawyer, the lawyer is going to say, well, Let's see where they where they're going with this investigation because if they're trying to wrap you up in this whole thing, maybe we don't talk to them right now. Maybe we don't talk to them. So it, it's it's a tough spot. It's a tough spot. Uh, great to see you, Doodle Mom. So it's really a tough spot for Madeline's mom at this point. You know, as, as a parent, again, all of us who are parents are saying, you know, your child is the victim. You're going to do everything you can. Whoever the whoever the suspect is to provide as much information, truthful information, and be completely transparent and just say, here's everything. 
Here's everything I ever said to him. Here's everywhere we went. Here's every home video. Here's everything we have. Please take it and analyze it. And that may be what's, what's going on. We don't know. We don't know for sure. The problems are when, when Madeline went missing is that, um, hey, Claire, um, when, when Madeline went missing, some of the things she said were a little bizarre. And the one thing that really sticks out to me, there's that uh, Newfie girl, um, was the story about seeing that there's some video and she's dropped off and there's video of her walking around. What is that? Like, she she wasn't walking around. Because investigators have put together a timeline that would make that impossible. Hey, Kate and Melissa. And, of course, uh, uh, Edel Traud. I'm trying with the German. It's, it's, you know, it's not my first language. Ritzy is with us from Chi-Town. Paula D. Happy Gnosis. Happy no is it is this happy gnosis, right? That's it. Happy gnosis. Absolutely. Kelly as well. A lot of YouTubers with us. YouTube coming in strong. Um, anyhow. Let me just check something. I just want to make sure that we're streaming everywhere. We should be streaming. Because I don't trust some of these. Um let's see. Are we streaming where we should be streaming? Yes, we are. We are live there as well. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, Facebook folks, you're being beat right now by YouTube. Uh, YouTubers are all over the chat here, all over the chat. Tons from YouTube. Where are you? Where are you, Facebook? You are disappearing. You are disappearing. Uh, Helen, the Scottish Lama. So what's this video of her walking around? Was she indicating that there was in fact a video? She was told there's a video. Did she believe there was a video? Because there, I don't think there is. I mean, if there was a video of her last being seen, right? While she's still missing, we're going to post that video. Aren't we? Aren't investigators going to release that video? If it exists, I don't know. There've been a lot of stories about what this video may be. And the most, the one that just blows my mind is some people speculating that she dressed up like her daughter and was walking around so she'd be seen on that that grainy surveillance video. I can't imagine that. But if that's true, oh, then you are in the case. You are beyond in the case. You are charged across the board with everything here. Um, but uh, we'll we'll see what investigators come up with. Uh, Git is joining us from from uh, Sweden. And uh, Lori from Ohio. All right. So the mom, the, 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 the trouble can come in many different forms, but she can also be the best witness, right? She is the one who is going to provide the inside story of what was happening in that house, what was said. And... The catch-22 is, is like, all right, all this is happening and she has no idea. Um, what does she know about that day? And it's still, you know, it's still not super clear right now that everything that was going on, like exactly where everyone was and what time they were there and the last time she saw her daughter. You know, there was one story I spoke to her the night before after the birthday party that mom missed because she was working. Then there's another story that she saw her getting dressed for school. Like, which is it? Is it the, the night before or is it the morning? And why would there be any discrepancy there? Like, you would know the last time you saw your daughter. You would know that. It would be like crystal clear and there'd be no ambiguity. But there was there was a level of ambiguity in in her statements. And I don't know, did nerves get to her from being on television? She's just not used to it. I don't know. Brooklyn's in the house. That's all I know right now. Brooklyn is in the house. Um, oh, here we go. We got Penny is on Facebook. Penny holding up for uh, the folks on Facebook. You know, I'm telling you, the folks on YouTube, much, much more engaged right now. Folks on Facebook need to get engaged. Um, but of course, Sue is here. Bravo. 
Um, by the way, we need just a little bit of help on Facebook. Um, and this is for you YouTubers too, if you have a Facebook page. If you can go to my Facebook page, right? And follow me. I'm like three and a half thousand followers away from a million. So I want to throw a million party on Facebook. Um, but what I need folks on Facebook to do who are on Facebook now, you need to share it, share the live stream. Um, and that helps a ton. If everyone who's watching on Facebook now just shared, um, you know, within a couple of days, we might be able to get those 3,500 more just to get to a million on Facebook, which would be awesome. Just starting on YouTube and we're growing by leaps and bounds uh, every day with every video we do. So I appreciate all that help as well, folks. So that's awesome. That is awesome. Um, Maria's here, of course. Of course, Maria's here. Why wouldn't she be? As is Delaney out in California. Salina. What's HM? HM, is that a place or is that just initials? Hmm, 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 hmm. Hey, Muggsy. Um, so what, what's going to happen with mom here, right? What's going to happen with Madeline's mom? I, I, a couple things could happen. Number one, she right now, like through her attorney. Like that's one way you can speak. So sometimes attorneys are concerned, right? I'm representing someone. I know I'm the agenda up. They're telling me they're not involved, but I don't know. And I don't know if investigators are going to try to get her on something. So I'm not going to have her give a statement, but I will speak with investigators. So it's not her giving the statement. It's me saying, well, here's what she would say, or here's what she could offer in, in helping the investigation without opening up her to uh, potential liability. But again, it's it's a tightrope. It's a tightrope for everybody. It's a tightrope for prosecutors because they don't know everything yet. You know, is she, is she not? Is she part of this? Did she know? Was she not part of this? Is she a victim just like Madeline, right? I'm sure they want to get the full backstory of when Stefan Stearns became part of Madeline's life. You know, when did that happen? How did that happen? Um, tons of questions there. Tons of questions there. Jessica, when I saw Madeline's mom in the news, it just made me sick. If were my daughter missing, I would have been crying and begging for safe return. Yeah, that was the other thing that struck people was her demeanor. Again, judging people, that's, that's, that's what juries do. So when people, whether it's on social media or anywhere else, say, well, why, why are you judging her? Well, that's kind of our job. That's kind of our job. Like when, it, when a jury is inside a courtroom, their job is to judge people, to judge their credibility, judge what they're saying. And it's the total package. It's what they're saying and how they're saying it. So before a case gets there, I think that the public is permitted to judge stories, et cetera. What you're not permitted to do, though, is to accuse someone of a crime uh, in bad faith, knowing that it's not true, number one, or jumping to conclusions. I mean, you can talk about, hey, I didn't like the way she sounded. That's different than saying, I believe she murdered her daughter. I think that's different, right? And I don't know. I, don't, I haven't really heard anyone say that. I think everyone's trying to figure out what were the dynamics in the house? Because that's that's that uncovers everything that's happening here. Once we once there's some level of understanding of the dynamics inside the house. And, and I think for investigators, that has to come from mom. It has to come from the digital footprint as well. Text messages. What was the tone? What was being said? Who were they talking about? Was there direct communication between Madeline and Stefan? Um, how about Madeline and her mom? How about Stefan and Madeline? What are all those communications? Every text message that they're sending back and forth. What is the nature? What is the tone? What is the, the um, subject matter? All of that. All of that. Um, yeah, DC three, that's the ultimate question, right? That's the, the most important question at, at this point. Well, here's what we do know. If it is Stefan Stearns and that's what investigators believe, there's no rush. There's absolutely no rush. He's being held without bond right now. So there's no rush, um, for those charges. You want to dot the I's, cross the T's because once that, once, 
once you formally charge someone, that's when the clock starts ticking. And that's when you ha and you have the burden of proof. Remember that prosecutors have the burden of proof. One thing we can say, oh, yeah, they think this guy did it. Right. The other thing is we've got to make sure we have all the proof and we've done everything we need to do uh, to be ready to prove that case as soon as it's ready to go. Right. And if someone gets charged and is um, being confined prior to trial, they can demand a speedy trial. So you don't want to get caught where the defendant's uh, demanding a speedy trial, which they're entitled to under the Constitution, and you're not ready as a prosecutor. So as long as he is being held, you know, it's kind of like almost there's like a timeout and, and it, you can get your case together. Um, run the forensic tests that you need to do, analyze that car, analyze the fibers in the car, everything you need to look at, any piece of uh, DNA, um, the digital phone records. You can do the, the tracking of the phone. You can figure out what you can get from the car, um, what you can get from the home, what you can get from talking to people who are interacting to get the full picture and as much evidence as possible and see where it leads you. Um, that's why I'm not concerned about the timing right now at all. Not at all. Thank you, New York Patriot lady. Appreciate it. All right. Wood chip granny. <laughs> Wood chip granny. Uh, of course, True After Dark is here. Encouraging everyone to hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Okay. Now. This is an interesting concept, uh, Nufi. <laughs> Can I call you Nufi? Um, which is the mother should be held accountable just as much. Mm. It, it, there's a lot of variables that go into that. A lot of variables. Now, when we're raising children, right? Like, like she's going off to work. If everything is happening when she's at work, can can she be held as accountable? I, I don't think so. But if she is knowingly allowing this to happen, absolutely. Now, when it comes to when she goes missing and then she is found deceased, um, if, you know, I don't know, she was somewhere else or... I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, if she's off at work and he's dropping her off and, you know, she doesn't know till the end of the day. And that's the first time she hears of this. And then he's telling her what happened and she um, just believes him. You can't hold her accountable just for believing him. Okay. Legally, I'm talking about legally in our criminal justice system. But if she knows what happened and she's helping to cover it up, whether it's beforehand or afterwards, um, then yes, she can absolutely be dragged into that aspect of the case as well. And again, like everything else, it depends upon uh, the facts that are uncovered by investigators, which is something they're doing right now. By the way, we're over 3,000 live viewers right now. So thank you, everyone everywhere who's watching, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, or on X. Uh, we're on Twitch now too. Um, I don't, I don't know what it looks like on Twitch, but we're apparently on Twitch as well. Um, here we go. Okay. All right, everyone. Um, I'm still gathering up everything. I'm doing everything here all at once. Um, but as a prosecutor, I really need to figure out what mom's deal was. Um, I think they're analyzing those interviews she did on television as well. Like, is she misleading people? And if so, that raises suspicion. Is she being controlled by him? Is she in fear of him? Well, these are all the things that they, they need to find out. And if she has an attorney at this point, uh, then he or she, the attorney, needs to communicate that. Silence isn't going to help her here uh, because um, a mother staying silent in the middle of the investigation of the um, assault, sexual assault and murder of her daughter um, is not good. It, it, it's just not good. You just can't, you can't, you can't do that. You can't do that if you are someone who's factually innocent and 
you don't know anything about any of this, then you need to be the best witness possible. Interesting little headline that I saw um, coming out of one of the stations down in Orlando in Central Florida is that um, the schools, and we made a big deal about the school notification, like when, when, when does it come? Like your child doesn't show up to school, when do you get it? Well, apparently in this case, what we've heard from the schools that the notifications did not go out until the end of the school day. What's the purpose in that? Where's the safety in that? So uh, it looks like Orange County schools, as a result of this, are looking at their policy saying, well, maybe we should call parents during the day if their child isn't there. That might be the best way to do this. Because parents work. Parents, you know, trust that their child made it to school or are in school. But if the child themselves leaves school or if something happens where the child is abducted, I mean, and isn't there, let the parents know. Let the par we want to know. We absolutely want to know. Like, you're not in first period? Why aren't you in first period? Where are you? Where, 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 where were you? And we'll be texting our child right away. And then we'll track them down and we'll, dr we'll drag them into school for you. Uh, but on the other hand, in terms of safety, if something happened, now all of a sudden, wait a minute, we can, we can start to try to figure out what happened a lot quicker. Um, and I think that's, that's an obvious thing that would would need to happen. I think every school should do that. You know, I, I was, I think I'm, I'm, I'm trying to recall when my, my, you know, my youngest just graduated high school a couple of years ago. And I remember getting those messages. I always, my recollection is I wouldn't swear to it in court, but my recollection is we got it in the middle of the day. Hmm. Okay. This is interesting. Mom got quiet. I'm afraid even if she knew it could be, like with Harmony's stepmother. Ugh. Harmony's stepmother was the worst. She was she was terrible. I mean, that's that would be really sad for this little girl if she had a a, a a mother like that evil stepmother. Thank you, Brenda. Thanks for listening from the UK. Um, so for folks listening from the UK, you know, you can put on the uh, things underneath the um, what they call. <laughs> the closed captioning if you don't understand my New Jersey accent over here in the uh, in the states. <laughs> All right, let's see what Carol has to say. Carol says most likely mom knows something my sense she's hiding crucial information. She better not be hiding crucial information. Do not hide crucial. All right, we got more folks here. We got a lot of folks from Facebook. Um listen, uh folks from Facebook, uh if you're watching on Facebook, please share this. I am like 3500 followers away from a million that'd be a big deal we might have a special party on here if we can hit a million so please share on facebook and of course you're smashing the like uh on youtube as we continue to grow there um thank you so much oh south wales is here too south wales of course of course of course all right patty says um let's see she knew this happens more than we knew. I used to take in teenage runaways a few days before they're taken. The Salton ones did tell their mom, but the moms were in denial or they chose the mate's word over their own child. Yeah, and and um, I, I believe that's possible. That's absolutely possible. I think there's two possibilities on what happened here. Um, Madeline could have been scared to say something, number one. Madeline could have felt like if I say something... Um, the mom's going to get mad at him and the mom's going to be lonely and she was trying to protect her own mother. That's possible. And then the third possibility, she could have told mom and mom either, again, was in denial or is protecting Stefan Stearns. But, you know, if, if she had told her mother that and then she goes disappearing, like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Jackie's looking forward to Karen Reed's big hearing tomorrow. Indeed, indeed. What a case that is up in Massachusetts. We'll be doing a live about that uh, pretty soon as well. Um, let's see. It, it's hard to keep up with the comments. I appreciate it. It's awesome. If, if I don't get to your comment, it's just it's just massive numbers, so I can't, can't do it. Uh, I thought they determined that the video was not her. Okay. Okay. Kim... Better than Kardashian. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. All right. So now we've got a war. It's like YouTube, 
YouTube versus Facebook. Who's going to win? Who, who wins that fight? Who wins that fight? Anyhow. Oh, we're up to 3,900 uh, live views. Everybody smash the like, share it. Let's get the live views over 4,000. That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. All right. What do we got? A lot of comments. Rocking amputee. You the man from, yeah, from Jersey, but living in Georgia. Which really, you know, is like the best of like both worlds, right? Got a little Jersey attitude, but here in the, the beauty of Georgia. All right, let's see what uh, Frankie has to say. Vinny, it's interesting. Mom said he, they saw her go through her backpack and pull headphones out. But if she left her phone, what was she listening to? Oh, snap. Boom. That is fantastic, Frankie. That is fantastic, right? Like the kids don't have Walkmans, do they, these days? I don't think so. They don't even have like iPods, everything's on the phone, but the phone was home. The phone was home. Mm. I don't know. She tried to say she had ADHD and she left her phone a lot. Uh, I, I have a problem with that. I, you know, I just don't think kids, teenagers, teenage girls are leaving their phone at home. It's the most important thing to most of them. Am I crazy? Am I crazy? We know he was there when the TV interviews happened. And if that's in an apartment of uh, the psychological coercion. Yes. You saw him like in one of the, oh, we're over 4,000 live. Thank you. Over 4,000 live. Smashing it, baby. Um, yeah, he was there in the background. He was creeping in the background. Like he was creeping along in the background. It was, it, it was weird, right? At one point, Cracking his knuckles like this, pacing around, you know? Was he one of these control guys, one of these control freaks who somehow could manipulate um, the mother? Or is she complicit? You know, it, it's it's got to be one of the two. She's either complicit or she's being manipulated by this guy. And, and it comes back to how this is going to play out. She's either like the first witness called by the prosecution or she's sitting next to him during the trial. Although they could get separate trials. All right. So we got a hello from Melbourne, Australia. I have no idea what time or day it is over there right now. No idea. Like the UK, I usually add, what is it, like six hours or so. Um, so I kind of have an idea that it's like people getting home from work time over there or getting back from the pub, whatever you guys do over there which is awesome. Uh, but Australia, like, like, is it the middle of the night there? Or is it like first thing in the morning? I don't know. No clue. All right. Here's Brendan, my five-year-old granddaughter always wants our phones and doesn't want to give it back. So a 13 is usually connected. Yeah, I would think so. Oh, look at that. I am right. Beth in Kentucky. It looks like it's uh 429 in, uh, 429 a.m. in oh, it's only four hours difference in the UK. Oh, that's because you guys know. Do you guys don't have daylight savings time? Is that just us that we do that? That we do that today? Daylight savings time started. All right, weird people do weird things. Sam, I am. Yeah, yeah. Evil people do evil things also. Evil people do evil things. And Susan, hello, Susan, from across the pond. Okay. I'll tell you what, I'm trying to hit some of these comments, but they're, they're just flying by so fast that I can't even catch half of them. It's 5.30 in Wales. So, yeah, so right now I guess it's a four-hour difference. All right. I've got it. I've got it. Fantastic. All right. Vinny, that interview, Maddie mom did for a reporter. It was set up from detectives, and that's why she was shaking after the interview for a lawyer. She lawyer up, stop talking. Yeah. 
Well, once you lawyer up, you're not going to talk. I mean, how many times do you watch my show? What does every defense attorney say? They say, just be quiet. And I say, even if you're innocent, you're supposed to be quiet. Even if your child's missing, you're supposed to be quiet. Even if they're investigating the murder of your child, you're supposed to be quiet and not let them know everything they need to know so they can figure out what happened and prosecute the person responsible. So I had an interesting conversation, and this is, I think there's a belief out there. There's a misperception, like when people get arrested and people get charged, like how many times innocent people get charged. Let me run some statistics by you real quick, All right? So of people who get charged with a crime, between 94 to 98% of them will admit their guilt and plead guilty, okay? They will plead guilty. So the rest um, are resolved in a couple of different ways. Um, some of them go to trial, right? So let's say 2 to 4% go to trial, right? And of those 2 to 4% that go to trial, how many of you, how many of them do you think, what percent are found not guilty? 50%, 40%, 30%, 20%, 10 to 15% are found not guilty of the 2% who were charged, right? So if you take like 10% of the 2%, we're talking about tiny little numbers that are found not guilty. Now, those who are found not guilty, okay, there's one more extrapolation you have to do, and I don't have numbers for this because you can never get numbers for it. But of, of that 15% of the 2 to 4% that go to trial, right? So it's a tiny, tiny number that are found not guilty. How many of them are actually like factually innocent versus the prosecution just didn't have enough evidence to prove it? See, that number, I don't know. I would say that number is probably closer to 50-50, right? Like someone who committed a crime could be charged, could go to trial, and could be found not guilty, even though they committed the crime because they didn't convince the jury beyond a reasonable doubt, which is a difficult burden. So when, when, when we're looking at these cases and people, you know, there are a few, not a lot, but there are a few people jump all over me because many... Why are you made up your mind already that this person is guilty? Well, first I've, you know, some of the evidence has been made public and, you know, it's okay. It looks pretty obvious to me from the evidence in the case, right? But it also bears with the statistics, like the statistics uh, bear that out. That 94 to 98% of them are going to admit their guilt and those who go to trial 85% of them, 85 to 90% of them will be found guilty of that small amount. I mean, so that of the number of people who are charged who are factually innocent, the number is like you it's like a it's like a grain of sand. Doesn't mean all of them are going to be prosecuted, but the ones that are actually guilty is like a grain of sand. And if you and if you have <laughs> Face, look at this Ruthie's all over Facebook is so toxic you can make it on YouTube only <laughs> thanks Ruthie um, so when when you know an arrest is made it's not like an episode of Law and Order like Law and Order had this formula where you knew the first person arrested was never guilty well, that's not how it is in the, in the real world. In the real world, like the numbers are just overwhelming that they get it right. Police don't generally charge people who are innocent. They just don't. They don't. A crime happens, they solve it based upon the evidence. Now, the times when this can be messed up is when there are outside influences. Like um, there's like this public outcry that investigators respond to, right? They shouldn't respond to the public outcry. They should respond to the evidence. When there are political considerations in the case, if there's some sort of political aspect to whatever's taking place, when that intersects with criminal justice, you have problems as well. 
So this is interesting. Walk among the tombstones. That interview she did set my mom's senses on high alert. My gut instinct is she knows. <sighs> yeah, it's... It's like, it's like something was off. Something with no one who has watched that has said, oh, yeah, no. There was something off. Was it the, the, the stress of being on television? Was it the stress of the missing child? Was it him lurking behind her? Was it her not being 100% truthful? There was something that was throwing it off that made all of us react the same way. The demeanor, uh, the, 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 the emotion or lack of emotion all came into play. All came into play there. Uh, all right. We're doing well, folks. Up to 4,600 uh, that are watching across all platforms right now, which is, uh, again, amazing. Amazing. Yeah, see if we can, can we get it to 5,000? Would that be too much? 5,000 would be too much, I think. Mm. All right. Let's see what Bobo says. The video proves she's guilty of, mm. and the question is, will the mom also be charged? She lied to police and knew. The statement, that, you know, the we statement was weird, was a weird one. Yeah, this call is crucial as well, Keely. Absolutely. You know, that's part of the evidence they're putting together, all the records. Here's what Jimmy thinks. Jimmy thinks that he's been doing horrible things to that daughter for years. Yeah. Well, according to investigators, it goes back to at least 2022 when it's been documented on his phone which is, that's, I mean, that's next level stuff. Hello from Chicago. Jocelyn's with us. How do you feel about the mom making a GoFundMe that's up till December for funeral expenses? However, the funeral home gave the services for free. The GoFundMe is, you know, GoFundMe plays a couple different ways in a lot of these stories. There are GoFundMes that go up. Um, I think what's happening with, uh, Lake and Riley and there was a GoFundMe that are setting up some sort of, I don't know if it's a scholarship or some sort of safety thing for other young women, um, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, we'll see what happens to the 17,000, you know, but when you give money to GoFundMe, it's gone, it's gone, you know, it's gone. They can do whatever they want with it pretty much. I believe, I believe. Look at this, Heidi. Yes. Yes, Heidi. We just showed I just showed up in your feed. Boom. I just showed up out of nowhere. Look at that. Well, make sure you subscribe and smash the like button, Heidi. Oh my goodness. Yeah, autopsy definitely done. Autopsy toxicology. Um I've spoken to my experts. They believe it's likely, likely done already. Toxicology may not be back yet. Um, but sometimes before they put out the whole report, they want to take a look at information gathered uh, by investigators because they can, an, an, an ME can take into, into account all the evidence involved in the case to get to cause and manner of death. It's not just what they see in the autopsy room. It's also what investigators have uncovered. So it's a good um, combination. Um, so there we have it. All right, what else we have? Cammy, a mother knows, a mother knows by a child's behavior. So even if, even if she didn't tell her, she should have felt that something was wrong with her daughter. We're almost at 5,000, folks. We're almost at 5,000. Uh, Facebook, need to share. YouTube, smash. Oh, we're over 5,000. Bravo. Well done, everyone. Well done. 
well, well done today. This is uh, this is good. This is very good. We're killing it. We're killing it. Let me see if I can tell how many are on each. Uh, I can't tell. Na, 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 na. Indeed. I'll tell you what. An overwhelming majority of the views are on YouTube. What happened to Facebook? I'll tell you, Facebook is crazy. Okay. So quick story. It's not, it's not important, but I'll just point it out to you. 996,000 followers on Facebook and I'll post a video there and 6,000 people will see it on their page. It'll, it'll just show up on their page of 6,000 of 965. Meanwhile, on YouTube, I just started this thing and people are able to access it. It's amazing. It's amazing. I don't know what Facebook's doing. Okay. Katrina says grief shock. Yeah, that, that, that's part of it. That could be a big part of it. You know, and, and especially since we don't really know her baseline personality, right? We don't know what she, what she was like before. You know, how she would act, how she would react to things. So it, it becomes a little bit more difficult because that our introduction to this woman is potentially, and I mean, it should be at the on the worst day of her life, right? She gets introduced to the world on the worst day of her life. Hmm. And, well, the other problem is if, if, is if, Oh, thank you, post woke world. <laughs> you can do it, Vince, as my own boss. We can do it. We can do it together. We'll do it. Um, and and Natalie gets to it right. She contradicted her statements first. He dropped her off, then we dropped her off. So the whole story stinks. That to me, that's an awkward use of we. We like if your child's missing, I I would think that you would want to give. The most specific, I mean, the most specific direct information about what happened, you know, like we is like, you know, in custody situations, yeah, we'll pick her up and maybe the husband or the wife or the husband and the girlfriend, you know, whoever is going to go pick them up. Oh yeah, we'll pick her up. But this is like someone has gone missing. So you want the, the specific information like dropped off in this car at this time, at this place. And you want to be as exact, as precise as possible, especially when speaking to police and the public, because you want her found. That's the part that I don't understand. That's the part I don't understand. The archer and the empress tarot. That child was likely the mom's meal ticket and was selling those videos on. Oh, no. You think? I can't imagine. I can't imagine. But anything's possible, right? Anything is possible. Uh, Zuhar does not believe in mom. We shall see. Um, Dara, Granny's watching you too. At Granny's watching too. Thank you, At Granny and Dara. The mom seemed to just be going through the interviews that she knew were coming. No genuine pain nor feelings. Uh, that, I mean, and that's... That's that's the way she came off, right? And you have to wonder. You have to wonder. You have to wonder. Okay, in elementary, middle school, we got called right away. High school, 6 p.m., which is terrible. Trish, that makes sense um, to definitely call elementary and middle school kids right away, but high school right away as well or at least in the middle of the day, however long it takes um, to get the information together. Now, this is interesting from Tiffany. I got major DV vibes from her, the way she would look at him before answering a question, looking down, cowering, still think she knew. I um, think she was abused too. Well, if, if that's the case, if, if she's a victim of domestic violence, um, he's locked up now. 
she's safe now. So now she can she can tell all to investigators. She can tell all to investigators. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mom said she was at work. And all this stuff, these are things that can be very easily verified. Where everyone is and when they're there. So. Didn't one of them say they put Maddie in the car because she was asleep? Makes no sense. That would make no sense. There was something about uh, a statement about her sleeping. Um, I, I don't know if a child's going to wake up in the morning, get ready for school and fall asleep. Maybe. Maybe that's possible. I don't know. Uh, Keely, I'm with you on this. I think this is possible. The police made up the story to see the response and to see if their story changed. Um, it's very possible. Police can say anything they want during the investigation. They don't have to tell the truth. They can make stuff up as part of the investigation to try to elicit the truth from whoever they are investigating. Um, so I think that's a possibility. Now, if they did do that, did it seem like she believed it? Because in the interview, she says, I don't know how much I can say. Right? Meaning she received information from investigators. So if investigators are feeding her the story that there's a video of someone, um, if I was the mother, I'd say, let me see the video. Let me see the video. And then you'd know in half a second if that's your child or not. I don't know how it went down. I don't know how it went down. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a few things that really need to be answered here. Lana, do I anticipate an arrest for mom soon? No, I, I don't. And, and I'm, again, this is a tightrope for prosecutors because you're looking at mom, you're looking at the first witness I would call in the case. If you're charging Stefan, if Stefan is charged with the murder and the abuse, the first witness I'm calling to the stand is the mother period. She's going to lay out all the evidence. It's not going to be the medical examiner. It's not going to be the investigator who responded. It's going to be her. However, if she's a co-defendant that's out the door, then she'd have to cut a deal. Then her credibility is undermined, uh, is vulnerable to attack. You know, it, it's still is usable and could work because we've seen it a million times where a cooperating witnesses testimony is used to convict. And, you know, most recently Adam Montgomery, Kayla cooperated. She clearly was involved to um, whatever extent you believe she was, but she was there in the middle of all of it. Um, but that's part of the process for prosecutors. You have to balance how much do I need the eyewitness testimony versus the forensic evidence versus videos versus um, any DNA evidence I have, any other circumstantial evidence that I have in the case, including videos of the car. So there's a, there's a lot to consider. So I don't think she would be charged quickly. And I think there would be discussions with her lawyer if they believe she's going to be charged with something before they charge her. So. Um, it's a little more nuanced than just charging the mom. You know, if the child was missing, there'd be more pressure to charge mom if she was culpable for anything. All right, folks, here's my situation. All right. We've been on, I don't know, about 40 minutes or so. Um, I would go longer, but I can't right now. I got a break. But before I break, while well, I've got 5,300 of you here, once again, trying to crack a million on Facebook. So if you're on YouTube predominantly, but you go to Facebook once in a while or have an account, find Vinnie Politan Court TV and just follow me. Vinnie Politan Court TV, follow me. I want to crack a million there. Uh, in the meantime, hit the smash, hit the follow, subscribe. Thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, don't forget, watch me tonight, 8 o'clock. 
Uh, we're going to take a look at the Lake and Riley case tonight also. Um, we've got some new video to show you in that uh, case as we continue um, uh, our own investigation of, of what happened up there at the University of Georgia. So look for that tonight. Um, and all the developments in this story, obviously, we'll have as well. Um, I'm Vinny Politan, 8 to 10 live Monday through Friday on Court TV. Then Saturday mornings, instead of cartoons, you can watch me at 10 a.m. on Vinny Politan Investigates. And then this May, season two of Accomplice to Murder with Vinny Politan um, uh, will pr be premiering. I'll be talking about that as we get closer and closer. But thank you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And please don't forget to hug the kids.